Shortage Medical Health Officer says more health centers being opened in Clarendon, but not enough nurses and doctors to staff them. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on air and online at onespotmedia.com. I'm Janella Precious. Also this evening, vendors in Coronation Market in downtown Kingston complained that frequent power cuts causing them to lose business. Kingston Mayor says work is progressing on a section of the Papine market damaged by fire and entertainer Mavado still wanted for questioning while another man arrested for violence in cassava piece. There's also Saturday sports special, sports commentary and weather in this newscast. So stay tuned, the news in detail after this break. Welcome back and a special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. The health ministry's move to create more health centers to ease the burden on public hospitals in Clarendon is causing a strain. At Thursday's Municipal Corporation meeting, Medical Health Officer Dr. Kimberly Scarlett Campbell explained why. TVJ's Krista Campbell reports. More health centers, but not enough staff. Medical Health Officer for Clarendon, Dr. Kimberly Scarlett Campbell, told councillors that nurses and doctors are in short supply in the parish. Bunker Hill Health Centre is scheduled to be open on June 24, 2018. But the biggest challenge we are having in Clarendon is shortage of doctors. Our doctor is very, very low. I mean, right now our doctors are being stretched all over the parish and it's very difficult for us to coverage. Four Cuban doctors are to arrive in Clarendon in July and Dr. Scarlett Campbell says that should help. But she notes there's still a problem. James Hill and Frank we should have a full-time doctor Monday to Friday. Because of our shortage, we have to be having like two days per week or one day per week and that's not sufficient. So even though we are getting these four Cubans, we still need about 10 more doctors to be honest, to really fill the gap. In the meantime, she explains the plans already being made for the placement of two of the Cuban doctors. But what we wanted to do was to offer curative service out of Lionel Town Health Centre. Right now, Lionel Town Hospital is being overwhelmed by non-urgent cases. So we are thinking about placing one of the Cuban doctors at Lionel Town Health Centre. Mm -hmm. We're also thinking about placing one at Chapultan Health Centre to try to boost the service in Chapultan. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. Vendors at Coronation Market in downtown Kingston are upset that frequent power cuts are causing them to lose money. They're calling for the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation to rectify the issue. TVJ Shamela Mitchell reports. It's Saturday afternoon at Coronation Market in downtown Kingston. Business happening, but there is a problem. They call over this one, all over this side, no light over this side. Left. All right, no light. When it comes tonight, darkness. Vendors say the market has been without power since Tuesday evening. And coupled with poor maintenance at the facility, they are more vulnerable to thieves. They say the frequent outages have also turned away customers who are worried about their safety. When the criminal elements take them, do them drastic things, the people them are spread it and the people them out of the road are afraid for coming because when them hear the light and them say West Kingston and the war we are going, nobody not going to come, everybody afraid. Even last night they come in, they have them have no light up there. And I'm going to put on a floodlight down there to make we could have get to see. Focus down here so that we could have see if we move around down. As you can see, God bless them by and nothing to sell. Right now, see there, she come for your money, I'm not having enough money for PR. But still have to pay my stall fee because they not take no fee and answer. KCC need for the something about this. And there are other concerns. Vendors say the bathrooms have been out of use because there is also no water at the market. They say multiple complaints to the municipal corporation which handles payments to the Jamaica Public Service Company have gone unanswered. TVJ News sought a response from town clerk Robert Hill. The Jamaica Public Service Company is assisting the Kingston St. Andrew Municipal Corporation in restoring electricity. Um, from preliminary reports, I have not had a hard copy as yet. There had been some issues on the supply lines, and the JPS is feverishly dealing with it. 
Um, I should get a report hopefully by tomorrow. Um, they'll be dealing with it between today into tomorrow morning. Shamela Mitchell, TVJ News. About a month after a section of the Papin Market in St. Andrew was damaged by fire, Kingston Mayor Delroy Williams says the cleaning up phase is now complete. Several vendors were displaced because of the fire, but the mayor says the KSAC is now moving to the next phase in getting the market back on track. We have gone through and looked at the damages and we have also now done a scope of the work required to to, rip, to, to do the repairs and that has to be procured so we are now in the process of the procurement. Mayor of Mandeville, Donovan Mitchell, is appealing for the public and media to allow the investigations into the Manchester Municipal Corporation to continue before he speaks on the matter. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, the Office of the Contractor General, and the Financial Investigations Division are looking into the breach at the corporation in which a check was disbursed for work before the requisite signatories gave approval. But addressing Thursday's monthly meeting, the mayor insisted the corporation has nothing to hide. It is not that police came in or that person came in. It is because we have been doing what we have to do. We believe in poverty. We believe that we have a fiduciary responsibility as a corporation for the funds that we receive here. And let the record show that it was the Manchester Municipal Corporation, then the Manchester Parish Council, that first brought our budget to the people of this country. Other corporations followed thereafter. We have nothing here to hide. But I ask that we allow the investigations to continue. Meanwhile, Councillor for the Mile Gully Division, Rowan Kennedy, was elected the new Deputy Mayor of Mandeville at Thursday's meeting. He replaces Councillor for the Spur Tree Division, Irvin Facey, who recently took a leave for health reasons and to facilitate the investigation at the Manchester Municipal Corporation. And the Manchester police are expressing concern about the increase in the number of reported violent incidents involving persons said to be mentally ill. Head of the Manchester Police, Superintendent Wayne Cameron, raised the issue at the latest municipal meeting. Um, every day the police is called to a scene or two, and nights as well, where mentally challenged people, people said to be uh, who are mentally unstable, creating disturbance of all sorts. Um, the one who chopped the policeman, uh, Corporal Booth in Christiana, was also said to be uh, mentally challenged. He remains in hospital uh, under police guard. He has been charged, but he has not faced the court physically as yet. He says the police need more help from agencies trained to deal with mentally ill persons. From time to time, you see them walking around with machetes as well. You know, you know the drive fears in um, residents um, and shoppers. So uh, it, it does require some intervention. Meanwhile, Superintendent Cameron is urging the public to help the police find Howard Munro, the mentally ill man accused of fatally chopping a physically challenged man in Warwick, South Manchester, on June 1. Mr. Munro has been on the run since he was accused forcing open the door of a 30-year-old Hainsworth Porter's home and chopping him to death. Another man was also reportedly injured in the attack. Investigators from the Major Investigation Division MID have charged a second suspect over the upsurge in violence in Cassava Peace St. Andrew. 23-year-old Andre Hines has been charged jointly with the 16-year-old son of dancehall entertainer Mavado for the murder of Lorenzo Thomas. They've also been charged with conspiracy to murder, arson, shooting with intent, as well as illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Investigators reported that on June 5, about 3 in the morning, the two accused were among a group of armed men who kicked open the door to Mr. Thomas's house. He was shot, chopped with a machete, and then set ablaze. The two are booked to appear in court on Monday. Meanwhile, the MID says Mavado is still being sought for questioning. He is still overseas, but his attorneys are reportedly making arrangements for his return. There has been an upsurge of deadly violence since gunmen allegedly fired at Mavado on, in Cassava Peace on June 2nd. 
The head of the Clarendon Police has asked the Health Ministry to help the police identify the reasons behind what she deems a difference in attitudes between residents in the northern parts of the parish and those in central and southern Clarendon. Superintendent Vendelin Cameron Powell was addressing the latest Municipal Corporation meeting. Sea Block Rock River, Chapter Mocha, uh, and Frank Field, adjoining communities. They are so peaceful. Put oh, your research the questions in gear and yeah, assist us in understanding what's different with the people in Northern Dark <laughs> from those who are residing in Central Dark and South Dark. Meanwhile, she says the police have had to call in parents to try to find out the root cause of some of the crime problems in the parish. Why is it that a woman with ten sons has produced seven criminal gunmen? Why is it that a woman with seven sons is in the process of burying the last one? They have all been killed. Either by battles with security force or with yeah, other criminals. More questions from Minister of Local Government Desmond McKenzie to the Jamaica Public Service, JPS, about the quality of service the government is paying for with at least 32% of utility poles across the island not functioning. TBJ's Kalisha Williams reports. The question of working street lights still a hot issue at the local government level. Even as the government continues to settle its estimated $7 billion street light debt to the Jamaica Public Service GPS. At Thursday's meeting of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation, the Minister Desmond McKenzie again questioned the quality of service the government is paying for. There are many communities across this country that have a light post with lamp on it, but never work. He again referred to the 2017 survey on the number of working streetlights across the island. A glimpse of the survey that was done tells us that about 32% of the information captured suggests that of the number that was submitted that we have now been dissecting that about 32% of the lights across the country is not working. Based on the findings, he says the government is better able to get some clarification from the JPS about its street light debt. Based on all the checks and balances that have gone into the process, I am sure that we are going to be able to reach a position because the service of streetlights is critical. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. A minor magnitude 3.2 earthquake shook sections of central Jamaica this morning. The earthquake unit reported that the epicenter of the tremor was near Nain and St. Elizabeth. The earthquake was also felt in the neighboring parish of Manchester. And that's the local segment. News from overseas after the break. Please stay with us.